go for the faceless boy, like Batrider, like these sort of heroes. Like, that more like yeah. EG style, yeah. like the Titan Enigma, that type of yeah. stuff. Something like that. I don't know if you guys remember the group stage with Secret. They played day one. They played the very opening match. They played. We were, we were talking about the panel, like, oh, Nature's Prophet's going to be OP. Everyone's going to play it. First game of the day, Secret, they first pick Nature's Prophet. They get owned with it because I think it was like a similar kind of thing where they had to meet Greek And then we never saw Nature's Prophet again from Secret on Group A. I feel like that's going to be the same thing here. They fail with Nature's Prophet, they're done picking it. If they don't want to have it in the game, they're just going to ban it. I mean, I, I don't think it's the Prophet's like, fault. Like, no, it's not his fault. I think they're not comfortable. It doesn't fit Secret style. It's though. just the overall composition that they chose with the Prophet and what they're up against was the main issue. Like, yeah. they, they couldn't have gone that line up against what uh, OG had. I feel like it was just really difficult. No matter how farm the Prophet became this game or he had a, let's say he had a better laning phase, he had a better early game, but I feel like the general problem would still be the same. Well, we'll have to see what style of secret's going to show up, if there'll be a Nature's Prophet or not. It sounds like we have a draft here, so let's hop into game two of OG versus Secret. So they will not be getting the Earth Spirit, and I don't think that surprises anyone. Well, so okay, much for not picking Nature's Prophet, they first I mean, I mean, they should just build a better lineup around the Prophet, and react better to what OG is actually doing because every time we talk about secret they don't really have a clear cut strategy sometimes but they react oh, they react a lot to I was just about to say IO is available and you first pick profit yeah. will OG go for it they're expecting, they they're expecting it that's why they, they went for the enigma right away I mean this whole draft has gone by so it almost feels like a pre-planned premeditated draft from both teams in some ways like secret Thinking, okay, we get first pick Prophet, they probably anticipated one, if not both, of these two picks from OG. Ben Wu, Nature's Prophet, Anima. Roshan, level one? <laughs> <laughs> not already, really Roshan, level one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I put nothing past the team with Eternal Envy. He, he's got the, the cojones to make that move, but I don't think they do it here. Beastmaster, Ursa. <laughs> Cloud9, game three, at uh, TI, TI4, was it? Level 1 Roshan. And they did it against Vici, it was, I believe, who had already destroyed a team that tried to level 1 Roshan against the previous day of the tournament. It was close, though. I think, like, FY came in fairly last minute and happened to scout it. It was after a pause. Yeah, because it was always, you, you think that it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> you got to believe, Winter. So Sven was banned out. Yeah. Normally against OG, he'd probably been, like in the past, he would have been the tiny, tiny? but oh. the spend in general has really gotten more That's popular. That's a good ban, Invoker, because Invoker would have been really good with the Tai and Io. And it would have, again, like, fit what we were talking about in the panel. We OG probably figured that, you know, maybe Team Secret are going to change things up, they're going to put Viha on more, you know, gang-focused hero, tempo control, and they don't want to deal with it, this game. And the spend ban has also another implication, I think that when you are a nature's prophet off lane, like Sven is one of the better heroes, because with the cleave it's a better hero against the, the treants, you can help the supports much better. And he doesn't really suffer as much from the treant harass, high strength gain, mm -hmm. decent armor base, and then obviously the war. And you have a disable, more importantly, to kill the prophet, so it's all in all a very good carry versus that hero. So, you're up against Enigma. Uh, how do you look to deal with this if you're OG? Are you just going to play your own jungle game here with the IO? Do they want to try and contest or pressure it? What do you guys think? They don't. I don't think they really can contest and pressure it just because mm -hmm. Fly normally plays the defensive one. Yeah, Crit is the one that plays the. They have Wiz as well. Yeah. It's not so easy. So they'll probably try to just focus on their own you know, game, try to stack more for the tie, try to get level 6 on IOS ASAP. They could always pull a fast one and do like IO plus one in the off lane if they mm -hmm. wanted the pressure. Uh, plus tight, because they're tight. <laughs> they already have tight. If they want to pull a fast one, they could always pull out the uh, Miracle Anti Mage mm. as well. Anti Mage mm. is pretty good with pretty good yeah. against these two heroes. I mean, you, you've still got to. It's not like a third pick. You want to see what secret. Because secret strategy isn't revealed yet, but mm. like right now, it's looking like a, a feasible anti Mage. So secret game. ban gyro. They could be trying to push here. <laughs> yep. You're up against an IO. I think Clicks is actually a really good pick for Secret. Just destroys the IO. Very good at setting up pickoffs with the Prophet. We saw uh, a lot of that. And the Natural um, Desolator builder as well. Yeah, we saw a lot of that, I think, in the... the that was, that that was two uh, games for Clinks on Secret 2-0. Yep. Oh. That's, uh, that's a really good call there. Because yeah, even EG did a lot of Clinks when they had Enigma. To sort of, it's like a compensation. You have a jungler and then you want to have a laner that doesn't really need too much support. So they get a counter to Black Hole, I guess, with the Wyvern yeah. here. Yep. And not to mention that they are probably getting ready for some straight push, so they want a support that can actually help push out the lane, so Wyvern helps a lot in that regard. This is, that's a lot of heal yep. for OG. 
Right but now, you already have puppies here, I guess. Right so now, I was gonna suggest AA, but they, yeah. but they don't have much like uh, low cooldown disable. They have like the curse plus the ravage, all very long cooldowns. So Seeker might be able to use that to their advantage, like get a really mobile hero for that. Can't help but feel like uh, a Wii Ranger is the next plausible option. And it's good against the Wisp, you know, mm -hmm. easy tether targets. I think Winter Wyvern's really good versus. Yeah, it's not so good versus. Oh, you're right. right. Yeah. Winter Wyvern gets a crush. What is Winter Ranger go for? Lena's maybe. Mm. I mean, you mentioned Weeha heroes. Yeah, the burst cat, the double zap, the pew pew strat with the, the lion Lena combo. <laughs> Just do it on crit, you know. Yeah, don't do it on a blade mill. No, do it on crit. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was so funny. When all <laughs> Pilo died. I mean, I think he kind of knew what was gonna happen too, but made it fun for the viewers. Oh, this this, is, this is the play. pick that's going to kind of reveal a lot about yeah. what Oki want to do. This fourth pick because they they it's they're kind of them no tell as well as their miracle hero. I mean, Seeker are probably they're probably expecting Tiny here, right? Um, Spend Spend band. It seems like they're trying to drive them into a Tiny pick. Chaos Knight is another bio partner. Chaos I guess. Knight's not so good versus me like yeah. Pasto. So couldn't Seeker just OD? Isn't OD really good for other heroes? <laughs> yep. We could potentially play that, but again, that, it's like it's Envy doesn't though. really play the tempo controlling safe laners too well. He's one of the more kind of farm dependent. I, safe I, I don't like OD on them, even though I think it's a good hero because it's like the the thing that I mentioned. They need to put Vihar on a tempo. Safe control. lane OD against Tide is good. That's Ooh. possible. What do you think about the Envy Spectre? It's been a staple for Secret Five and One. Tough lane this game against Tide and IO. If yeah. they, they pick Spectre, OG might just do IO plus tight on off lane, and Spectre is going to suffer a lot in the lane because your lane partner is Lion as well. But what are the strong lane control he carries that are left? Gyro's banned, Clinks is banned. Mm, I mean, for, for the secret, it's probably Weaver. Weaver again? Yeah, but yeah, it's. They're going to have the same issue that they can't really fight into OG and they have to speed push. <sighs> We've seen a lot of Ursa coming into this match. Is there any room for an Ursa it's here for other teams? Cool embrace though. I'm yeah, not sure. It doesn't I seem that good, good for other teams. No. I know OG are going to be. Uh, typically, it's No Tail who plays the Death Prophet mid. That'll be an OG for Secret, and they'll be looking probably for some miracle hard carry for the safe lane. I, sh I actually think that what Ben suggested might be better if they run the OD in the safe lane yeah. to make sure that they secure their lane against the Tide. That might be better for them. That's what I suggested, Winter. Oh, you suggested that too? Sorry, Parker. My bad. So, ba what Ben and you suggested? Not Parker? the first time that you have ignored your friends. Probably won't be the last time. Yeah, but if I ignore you, means that you mean a lot to me in some ways. <laughs> How does that mean that you mean a lot to you? Because he only ignores his friends. Yeah, because I only ignore my friends. <laughs> That's just messed up, man. I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I will not do that anymore to you, Parker. I promise. But he's not promising not to do it to me, Ben or Dakota. Okay, not to all, to all of you, okay? I made that promise. I'll never ignore any of you. He doesn't really need me, though. He doesn't consider us friends, so it's okay. <laughs> Reported. Ah. Nice try to be nice, though. Commend for being attempted friendly. <laughs> Anti-Mage ban. Uh, Envy loves <laughs> to play Anti-Mage. They didn't have the best control for him. So they're picking, yeah, they don't have good control, but also probably suggest they're picking a safe lane carry that may not be that good against AM. Oh, they just want to be fire manning all the time and they don't want True. secret to... It's, it's a split for, for sure. Yeah. yeah. We saw Miracle play Jug, is that something you guys see being possible? Yeah, Jug is really good this game for their that's, lineup. Yeah, I mean, you already know their support, so like that's super heavy heal, but... Secret don't really have... Play. They've got okay heroes to snipe it. Mm, Tiny is still a good band, like, despite us talking about the Jug. Tiny still fits your lineup very well. You have like four heroes that are... Quite squishy. I mean, Oli is not that squishy, but the other three is really squishy. The Lion, the Enigma, and the Prophet. OG Slark. I was actually just thinking Slark, but I, I felt like Secret had so much AoE and control mm. that maybe it's not the best pick. What do you guys think? You have the Io and the Tide Hunter to back it up. I think it's fine. It's just more in terms of the late game compared to the Juggernaut. Slark is much stronger later. So I, I, I think in that regard, OG just wants to secure a bit more of their late game, and it still serves as a could partner with the IO in the early to mid game. So what's MV0 now? <laughs> is it an... Well, I hope it's I hope it's OG. I hope OD is his hero. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and then we have this place like a park or something to help in the early game. I feel like they're just gonna pick Spectre or something though. <laughs> like, go great. Just nah, good. <laughs> <laughs> PA. I mean, it's secret, yeah. They might just go that greedy, but if they go that greedy, I worry for them. Right, that was...
I'm the hero. Oh. That... Oh. Okay. It's good in the laning phase, so... Okay. It's got five ranged heroes. I mean, it's a similar plan to what they had in the last game. They picked really good lane. And they're counting, they're going to be counting on their lanes to actually buy them enough time so that the five man push doesn't come early. They get enough oh, items to deal with it. Is that. there not some element of five man push to Secret Slam when they get the mech on Enigma? They've got the mm -hmm. draw plus Enigma to push with? Or yeah, that... that too, but I would favor OG's like, team fight much more with the Ravage plus the DP. Yeah, Okay. Alright, so with the five men spread coming out from both sides, we get ready to hop into action here. It's game number two of OG versus Secret. Alright, thank you very much, Dakota. OG moving out immediately. We'll see Crit heading down towards the bottom lane. Moon there by his side. Meanwhile, Pile I Die, he's made his way down in the river. He's trying to get the hill ward up here. Very deep position. It looks like he'll do it without being scouted. So Secret gonna have excellent intel on this bottom lane. Early on, uh, looks like Weha will be playing the OD. So the hopes of an NV OD, well, those are gone now, God. So he'll be on the draw range. You're more of a classic NV yeah. hero. That's kind of two games in a row we see Secret go for very deep wards to kind of scout out Moon's jungle more than anything, and also just his positioning. It helps set up kills on him, as we saw last game. Um, it just allows you to kind of control what he's doing with the ancient stacking, since Tide does kind of. Oh, maybe not rely on the ancient second, but he benefits so much from it. And oh gosh, they actually get the level one D ward. Wow, that is they've they've seen some tape on secret and must have expected this to happen. Or I mean, they they also looked at last last game's replay and saw, huh? They they put this ward last game. Are they going to do it again? Maybe, quite likely. Let's let's check it. Yeah. That perhaps seeing where the line was positioned uh, gave them a clue as well, but. In the end, uh, Secret, not going to have that early vision here. And losing one of these precious early game wards definitely hurts you. So we'll see where Puppy places the other one. But for now, uh, Puppy going to be yep. starting deep in his own jungle. Yeah, this off lane for Moon could be very good. You've got Crit on the Io, who's going to maybe spend some time in mid lane, but can also kind of rotate down bottom. But now there's no ward to contest him. He does have plenty of regen. He can go into the, uh, the he will be going into the Iron Talent to jungle up with. and. It just doesn't feel like Secret going to be able to do a whole lot to... I mean, Lion Dro, there's a lot of right-click damage, but Tide is just very resistant to that because of the Kraken shell. Yeah, looks like they want to try and contest this bottom rune. Crit is going to join Moon. Tries to grab the bounty here. The stun comes out rather early from Pilot Eye, but he gets forced back. Envy's trying to grab it, spamming away, but it's a double rune grab off the bat for OG. They've also got the bottle already coming out for Crit here, as Moon was the man to grab it. So this is a fantastic start for OG, and... Well, wow. for Weeha, things are going to get a little bit harder in the mid lane up against No Tail's Death yeah. Prophet. And they actually gave Crit the solo XP for the D ward, so he's already halfway to level 2 as well. And Io gets a lot stronger at level 2 because he can overcharge, which means when he's full HP, he can still heal up teammates. Um, like someone like a Tide on the front lines. So, going to be, uh, I think, a, quite a hard safe lane for Secret. Moon as well as Crit can get up in their face, and they have this big advantage from the D ward as well as the bounty. They're just running at Pile Die. They know he's got the one stun, so they tank it, and then they just keep on moving forward. Envy don't need the level one precision art. Doesn't offer a whole lot of firepower, but elsewhere we can see in the mid lane, the pressure coming in from Fly Weeha, no vision up to the north. Uh, we'll see, again, with the D ward around the Roshan pit, maybe Puppy is forced to plant his ward w uh, somewhere different from where he would have liked to. And something we often talk about is we, we don't feel teams punish the Enigma jungle very much, or very often. And we're not seeing a direct punish here, but I feel this is one of the, it's the times punish. where we're, we're seeing a team really go aggressive because there is an Enigma jungling. We've got this offlane dual lane, which has had a great early start. OG also went for the double bounty rune, something Enigma is really bad at preventing. Well, I mean, you should be able to kind of prevent it regardless, just because you can send four heroes to a rune. But Enigma doesn't have any level one potential because of conversions, and OG... They send Wyvern mid, they send a dual lane bottom, then Wyvern goes back top. They're looking to kind of win as many lanes as possible here because of the Enigma jungle. Yeah, uh, tough times here now, but they are getting the harassment out onto Crit. Frost Arrow's laying into a moon, gonna force him back, and then Misery arrives with the teleport and Secret again. They do get a first blood. Didn't win them the game last time, but they're looking for a secondary kill. Moon low. Won't end up going down there. Uh, elsewhere in the mid lane, you can see Weeha forced to salve, no tail. Couple of seconds, he could pop this one. Mm, it's gonna nuke him. So Weeha running low on the regen and 
he struggles in this mid lane so far. A TP that comes at a cost because as soon as that happens and Wyvern gets the two minute top ring, there's no reason Fly even needs to go back towards that top lane. It's a completely empty free farm lane for Miracles. So um, a, a worthwhile first blood TP, but it's not like there's, there's no trade. For OG, they're getting complete free farm. Misery's kind of suddenly stuck on this bottom lane, doesn't have a TP for another 10 seconds, and doesn't have a whole lot of mana. He accidentally gets his clarity cancelled as well, which was going to give him kind of the mana he needed to kind of sustain himself in lane. So it's not the best position for him to be in down here in this bottom lane, even though he got his team first blood. Can see Fly wrapping around mid. <laughs> Looking for that courier. He knows the bottle should be coming out soon. He wants to snipe in, actually, the the docky back at the base for now. This is a good timing to, to be here for this. You know, it's a, a null talisman. So around that 2.30 mark is normally when you'd see that, see the bottle coming out. We'll see if they fall for it. The pause makes you kind of have time to think about it, because if you're just, with the pause, if anything, may may lead to the bottle sniping being prevented. I mean, I don't want to say it, that, that that's going to be the reason why. Maybe he'd, he would have done it regardless, but... We can then be like, huh, I wonder where Wyvern is. Oh, is there a chance he's bottle sniping? Yeah, let's let's just let's just move it around in a safe, cautious way. But <laughs> come on, we want some drama, man. Just lay it down, throw the gun. I mean, it's a tactical pause. Envy's doing man. whatever it Absolutely. takes to win. Come on now. Oh, it's, it's puppy man. It's no the puppy pause. What do you, of course. <laughs> Envy may have hit the button, but we all know who the real mastermind yeah. behind it is. And he's he's been pausing for his. His eyes, LD, yes. Uh-huh, sure. <laughs> Blame your eyes. But the donkey is coming. This could be big here for Mr. Fly. Oh, oh nope. back. Probably getting some items for Enigma. Uh, it's going to be Enigma's three minutes now anyway, so. Yeah, Enigma's 10 gold short of Sol Ring, so you, you'll see it. And it's already upgraded, too. Worth a shot for Fly. Not a whole lot else you could be doing right now. Is that top lane is currently empty, but mid lane. No tail moving in, gets the Spirit Siphon. Onto Weeha, and they will ambush him from the side. Fly with the single slow there from Arctic Burn, but doesn't look like it's quite enough for the kill. Weeha will live to tell the tale. And backs away. Meanwhile, Dire Courier still walking here. Now they're going to upgrade it. I was going to say, there's a Nature's Prophet in this game. Got to be careful about that. But Courier kill is going to be avoided by both teams. So yeah, early game... Secret have dealt very well with the pressure. They're winning the CS battle here. They found the first blood at bottom lane. Enigma, I mean, as mentioned, being uncontested free farm jungle. And it, uh, OG trying to punish it, but for the most part, unsuccessful. The OD is still kind of holding his own in the mid lane against Death Prophet. The offlane Nature's Prophet's getting some farm in the jungle, help find the first blood. So overall, Secret with a much better, stronger early game, which is what you kind of expect from the Dro Ranger. OG just trying to make it a more neutral, even early game with their aggressive lanes, but it hasn't, it hasn't worked for OG. Yeah, and Puppy getting his customary free farm. Normally when this happens, he is one of the most crucial heroes in the game. So we'll see how OG are able to deal with him. They do pretty well here on Moon in the offlane. It's getting his levels a, at a decent clip. Even against the Drow Ranger, this is the beauty of the tide that you can just retreat to the jungle. But they're going to bring in the Nature's Prophet. And it looks like Secret have decided if Tide's not going to poke his ugly melon head out, they're going to punish it with a push. Got to use that, that Drow Aura. You can, uh, idle ones get bonus damage. Your range creeps get bonus damage. Uh, Puppy is rotating that direction. Heads through the river. Yeah, we go. was going to join the push. They're also going to scout out a small ancient stack brewing here. It will be up to fly to drag the wave back. Does have the splinter blast available now to slow down the push. He's actually going to summon a fresh set of Eidolons. Continues to move in. Fly got to be careful though. Finally, I might be able to spring the trap. Puppy has the Malefist to get the follow-up stun. Fly hexed as well. A triple disable combo from Secret. Enough for the kill. Yep. And with that. They're not going to leave this bottom lane. They will get the tower for sure. And I guess the question is if they even look for a bit more. The la last time I questioned, he's efficiency. Of course he's going to pop the draw aura. Does do so. And yeah, only a minute until so it cools down. That's why yeah, you pop you, it early. You spam that thing. Well, you, well, you don't necessarily want to spam it when you're focusing on the creep equilibrium because it can push out your lane. But uh, benefits you the just ruined the pubs of <laughs> players everywhere. <laughs> I still remember the old draw aura when they first reworked it. It was just always on. All yes. lanes are always punching. That was. That was the Centaur patch, when the Centaur ultimate stunned everything that it ran through. <laughs> uh, Drow Centaur, those were the days. But back to this game, back to the real world. We do see Free Farm for Miracle Gods, and he is going to rush the Midas here. This Level 6 already, so they are putting a lot of eggs here in the Slark basket, as far as the OG game plan. I mean, OG are going to be tested this game, because they're the ones who have the slow pace draft this game. They aren't going to be looking for that timing like they had last game, where suddenly they get it. It was even before the Lone Druid Radiance, where they were grouping up, taking down towers. They can kind of push and fight around the Exorcism a bit, but 
it's secret who will be able to, if anything, push faster. And that's with exorcism on the dire side. But this draw aura, Enigma Nature's Prophet, and the mech timing coming as early as it will from Puppy, probably around that 10 minute mark. Secret will be the ones dictating the pace of this game, and it's something we see a lot with it's the Radiant team who pushes and the Dire team who probably prioritizes Roshan and farming a bit more, and OG have adapted their, their playstyle and gone for that more kind of Dire-oriented strategy. They're going for the Banish here, mid lane, Spirit Siphon online, but Puppy rotates in, has the hole available, and lets it go on to No-Tail, in a lot of danger, trying to heal him up, fly it, cold embraces him, keeps him alive for a very long time, No-Tail's still surviving, they continue to volley auto-attacks after him and eventually get the kill. A good effort by Fly, but simply not enough. He had five ones in a fairy fight. I think he decided he wasn't going to escape. I'm not sure if it would have saved him. Did get to buy his gloves, so yeah. no gold loss. I think here. he was buying items rather than thinking, oh, I can live, I'll use my one fairy fight. Oh, pretty bold TP by Moon. Not yet level six, actually. He's very close to it, but they banish him, and they're going to stun him up. Moon counting on the level six. He's not going to get it. Oh, a really costly feed here for the Tidehunter. He doesn't have buyback either. He won't be able to participate. Misery turning for the curl. He sniped that as well. Catastrophe for OG in the mid lane. Hemorrhaging kills. Giving up couriers. They're gonna lose Fly as well. They might even lose No Tail. The B train has no breaks. 6 to 0. A tower as well. A triple kill to all heroes. It's the OD. And one of the most aggressive spikes upward in a gold grab you will ever see at this stage in the he game. He got 60 int at one point, and that was before even level 4 Arcane Orb. He just kept getting right click after right click. Surprisingly good against the Winter Wyvern with the, and the, with the, with the Cold Embrace. And this is happening. Int. This is happening with a Midas Slark, a Wisp Wyvern that aren't even near, they're not even close to level 6 yet. And you're against a Drow Enigma strat. Like, that is like the worst situation I think they're actually for taking that happen. Roshu. They're around the area. They've got the idol on screen. This is a very straightforward Roshan. Unless OG suddenly rotate in lots of heroes to contest it with Ravage, which I just don't think they're ready to do. They still haven't got level six on Winter Wyvern, and this Rosh is actually dropping in about 15 seconds. So, well, OG. They've dug a bit of a hole for themselves. I think that's putting it mildly. Yeah. Just very. The, 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 with the lanes not working out for them, the aggressive IO tide lane, they, it felt like they needed to find kills, not just... I mean, they kind of pressured the lane, but Drow just farm, found the, the, found the found the kill with the Nature's Prophet TP in, and as a result, OG's plan B, their plan B comes online so much later, so they're just kind of in this kind of intermission period where they're just trying to get some farm, some items, but Secret are going to get numerous objectives, I want to say, and just get a lot done during this period. OG are going to have to play absolutely flawless dota to live through that second round of aggression that's and here's come the mech secret. smoke puppy gets his mech pie as well as puppy smoke up together they're headed towards top to defend and fight into og they have the profit already this, as well this looks like it could be a complete disaster for top at og the one good thing for them is they've got and, a haste rune and fingers online so miracle does need to be careful here glyph gets deployed secret Sending their forward scouting party out. Pylai died, the man in front, and is going to try to get aggressive. Meanwhile, they have TP'd in Misery. A bit too far, perhaps, as the spirits start to come back in. And from the side, Puppy swipes in. Mech online, as you mentioned, only 20 seconds till the hole. Well, they don't get the kills, but Secret just so strong when they group up and push that they should get the tower for free. And it looks like they're going to do it with Envy. Off in the jungle, has the precision R ready if they even want to consider a second tower push. Secret still getting the objectives, albeit not with the bonus kills. And they've got their ulties up. OG still yet to level his, probably will do so. Either level 9, level 10. Not, a, not too big of a deal, it's not like a, a key spell for them. And they can defend this bottom lane with profit while continuing this push up top, and I believe that's what they're going to be doing. Envy not with his team for now, but... I mean, He's there in spirit. Just a, a mech enigma with an ODA, just like these three heroes could probably take a 3v5 almost with oh. exorcism on cooldown. Why is level 6? He gets a ward down, he's gonna scout up highlight die, but it's daytime, so. The right click damage isn't like, isn't there. It's like, even if you get a Winter's Curse off, unless unless it's on a hero being attacked by Drow Ranger, it's not gonna get a whole lot done. And Envy, nowhere to be found. It does set up a oh, finger. They just delete the okay. spark. Okay. Well, well that's a... <laughs> that was ugly. Miracle's not going to feel good about that. No. I think this is a game OG are going to quickly want to forget going forward in this best of three series. And well, the good news is the suffering will be uh, relatively painless if things continue this way. It'll be over soon. Fly now. 
getting found out by Misery. They do TP in, they get the Malefice off, and he tries to embrace himself, but continues to get hammered down by Weeha. Orb after Orb crashing in, still holding the Aegis for now. Crit gonna head to the south, no tell there to join him. But already, tier twos are dropping everywhere. This is the last outer tower, it comes at 11 minutes. Black Hole online, everything good to go. Yasha coming out for Envy, and here we go, OG. Up against it, up against a very strong push with Moon nowhere to be found. Doesn't have a teleport, he's gonna walk from the bottom lane and while that's happening, the tower is getting absolutely battered here. No tell, going to work a bit with the Spirit Siphon. Slowing things down, finally the Watermelon limps in but the damage was done. So they're, they're gonna be happy with that. They've rotated five heroes back on OG. It's a secret, they'll take advantage of the Prophet, they'll TP him to mid and they're just gonna push out these other lanes. And Dave, there's still a lot of room to grow on the secret side. They can kind of get up map control a bit more. They can uh, just find a few more levels here. They haven't really, I mean, you're still looking at most every hero level nine or blo below. On top of that, they're just not quite at that kind of critical mass point where they, I mean, they're, they're not at their strongest timing right now more than anything. They can probably go for this high ground push while they've got the Aegis, but with it expiring in the next minute, it's a very kind of small window for them to, to strike now with OG having Exorcism and Rabbit. If they want to go, it should be yeah. right now. Otherwise, you're, you're better off waiting. They definitely want to keep the pressure on. So would they do that by going for a high ground push or at least taking map control and starving out OG, keeping OG in their own base and creating a scenario where Miracle and Notel can't find adequate farm? Either way, Secret are going to be looking fantastic. Uh, this is going to give OG time to try and get back in this they game. They smoke an award, which is a bit unfortunate. Yeah, that one was planted uh, from behind the tree line, so unfortunately for Secret, they didn't actually see it coming. Not too big a deal. It just means they're not going to find a pickoff that they were hoping to. Uh, it gives Moon a little bit of time here. He's pretty close to the mechanism. OG going to go for a smoke of their own. I think, uh, OG, maybe, I feel like they just need to make a bold move. They need to try and guess where that smoke's headed, because Envy actually was solo pushing top lane, like kind of baiting OG into thinking that his team were behind him, so that they would go push out the other lanes, but it looks like OG may be able to find a catch on Misery with this. Very long way to travel for a smoke gank, but Trance gets summoned. This might be the opening they're looking for. Smoke's gonna break, no tell. He starts nuking down the Trance, but immediate drums getting popped by Misery, who will backtrack. And now Puppy comes in. Oh, almost in range there for the Malefice. That would have been big. But he will dodge away. They're not really farming much here, gods. No, and they're just in such a hard position for them to find a farm. Miracle has Midas, but any item follow-up is gonna take some time. And we also have to keep in mind, it is a six to nil tower advantage right now. Yeah. So this even if the f CS were dead even, the discrepancy in gold was go already going to be massive, and then on top of that, four out of the top six heroes in terms of CS are on the side of Secret, so they are very far ahead in every department. Yeah. I mean, as things currently stand, this game looking like currently the biggest stomp we've seen out of any of the matches so far. It's not over, it's not an insurmountable lead, but it's approaching that point with how much Secret control the map here. They've got wards in top lane and mid lane. Mid one actually going to get dewarded. That's going to help out a lot here as far as OG trying to prevent Secret from having total vision across the board, but... I right. think MVP might have a, a bone to pick with you about stomps, but <laughs> this is definitely yep. up there. Yep. This is looking ugly. OG not out of it yet, though. They have had some miraculous comebacks, courtesy of the Wisp, but their playmaking potential will be truly tested here. As we see Weeha grabbing an Ogre Club, likely it's BKB coming out for him. OG just don't have that explosive hero that can make a big play and suddenly they're kind of back in it. It's, it's a team fight where they can come back into it. The Ravage with the Exorcism with a good Winter's Curse. They've got to make sure they've just got the, the best Winter's Curse imaginable with the Drow Ranger killing off someone like the Enigma or the Lion. Slark needs to bait a bunch of spells and then yeah. get off his ultimate. Uh, Ravage has to be timed perfectly and well, for Secret, they're getting even tankier. Guardian Greaves now out for Puppy. We're gonna see our Nature's Prophet after completing drums up to 3,100 gold. Envy, meanwhile, grabbing his Ogre Club, either a BKB or maybe even just a Sanjin Yasha. Either way, a big item coming out for him, and then your OD. Weeha, back for the Blink Dagger. More initiation, and they're gonna find Moon here, it looks like, over towards the Dire Ancients as they smoke. Initiating on the Tidehunter, going to work on him with the Orb. Moon, though, is gonna crack it off. He marches forward, he gets fingered, Prophet on as well. Getting volleyed down here by the Adonis, can they finish the job? The Prophet TP sprouts there, they get the kill.
And with that goes the mech, no buyback. Available, Miracle desperately leaping out, but we out there with the blink forward and the banner set up. They're gonna need some help, Chris. Just gonna channel the relocate and try to get Miracle out. He does it in time right after the OD hammer gets dropped. A bit too late. Still no tie hunter though. But they likely, at least decent chance, they are gonna lose crit here. Yep. Let's see if he can tether his way out. Puppy, oh, does get the Malphys off. I lie die though, no finger available. So crit actually escapes and also saves his buddy. This okay. is going to salvage what could have been a lane of Rax otherwise. Yeah, well, defend the high ground in secret. Gonna keep just, I think the plan for now is still okay. Just keep hunting for pickoffs wh where you can and take Roshan once it's available. One, this next Aegis is gonna be the big, the big key timing for them more than anything. And OG, even if Secret don't get a lane of racks in the next 5, 10, 15 minutes, where's OG even getting farm right now? It's just, we're not see seeing any catch up coming out from Death Prophet. And Death Prophet is not a hero that plays well from behind. When you don't have a good start, when you're not getting farm, even if you've got a safe lane carry that is doing well, Death Prophet will not have a very high impact on a game just oh, through exorcism. They're praying for an early Roshan oh, respawn here, but they're not lucky not in that regard. Like that you said, you, very you, me you mentioned OG, uh, a gamble that's uh, on the bigger side. Blowing a smoke here, hoping it's almost instant, but sometimes that's what it takes to get back in these games. Miracle's gonna lead the charge here. We'll see an Alpha Wolf scouting things out. They are in great position up on the high ground. Maybe they can find the jump. Miracle's gonna lead the way, but as he bounces forward, he catches out Puppy. Puppy gets banished. Weeha trying to salvage the fight. Moon silenced up. Looks like they should be able to bring down the Enigma here. They will burst him. He does have buyback available, so potentially looking to turn this. They might wait out for the Exorcism. No tail. Low, but there's the Cold Embrace to keep him alive. The Wiz comes in. Crit also low. He'll end up going now. They've gotten two. Puppy still holding that buyback. Weeha in the midst of it all. Slamming the damage out onto Miracle, but Moon is gonna to keep things in fighting condition. We huh? Look at finished off here. It looks like by the ghost. Still no buybacks coming out for Secret. They've lost three big heroes. It's up to Envy to salvage it. A three for three. But when you're playing from this far behind, if that's how it ends, I think you're pretty happy as OG. And they're two main cores surviving as well. And, and that was the perfect Ravage. The perfect win close to perfect Winter's Curse. It hit the, the OD with the Dro Ranger attacking the OD. So it gave you that bit of extra damage, which they needed to kill the OD. They took out the Nature's Prophet. They killed the Enigma. They killed some of the most farm secret heroes while keeping Slack and Death Prophet alive and just having the positioning advantage, getting such a good jump, OG, an amazing fight to take at this stage of the game to keep themselves alive. But they needed it. If it wasn't a perfect fight, it would have been a disaster. Puppy goes down with the Guardian Greaves and the Black Hole still online, but we can all imagine how much different it would be if he gets either of those off. And OG's high ground defense is very scary, which is why Secret kind of have to play this one at a fairly slow pace. Pushing into the Splinter Blast, into the Tide Hunter is just a very kind of daunting proposition. So we'll see Secret kind of take their time about this one. We'll see how long they need. Pylai die. He does have Hex ready to go. Can make a move. America is going to wait up the Dark Pact. Miracle getting stunned from distance. There's the finger profit. Oh, I imagine bouncing through here. It is enough to secure the kill. Well executed gank by Secret. And now looking for Criswell with the teleport in misery gets a double kill. He was very quiet last game, but this game having a big impact. OG though, they've got the Yule Scepter. No tail is going to debut it here. Looks like he'll get the profit right as he starts to really come into his own. So that's a being a two for one, but with the death of the Slark, he'll be happy overall. And while that was happening, Secret also going to grab a Roche. Yeah, good. Good kind of follow up from Seeker. Really nice, nice gank by the Invis Lion there, just knowing that, hey, okay, okay, with the Nature's Prophet, we'll get this kill, even if it does come at the cost of one life there. And Seeker put themselves in a very good position to break high ground soon. They don't have the BKBs yet, well, at least a BKB yet, probably Weeha, the one player with the Blink Initiation who particularly wants it, so he doesn't get counted out by the Ravage, but. Um, with an Aegis in hand, they may feel confident to go for a play soon. And if anything, they can wait till they have Aegis and BKB. I think there'll be at least maybe a small window where they can have both those two items. And on top of that, they have the Blink Daggers. Weeha with one. We just have seen a Blink Dagger getting picked up on Pylai Die, so they have very good pickoff potential to set up for that push. For now, OG are hanging back. Miracle has a respawn here, closing on Asanj and Yasha. So he manages to keep his farm up, but he's really the only one, as you mentioned, the rest of the OG squad struggling mightily. They will grab a Blink Dagger on Moon, so they get the long range initiation and he'll need to make sure that he times it right. As Puppy goes back into a Vitality Booster here after the Ogre Club, yes. so not rushing a BKB. Are we he gonna see a, up. Is it a Crimson Guard? Is it a, a casual Vit Booster? Could be yeah, the Crimson Guard's an item he's gone before on, on Enigma. Pretty good against the, the Slack right-click damage, so... 
And it's good, a good five man item, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah. So uh, definitely a possible item. The Rod of Atos is an item I've seen uh, EG go with the Fear Enigma, although not looking like a particularly strong item against the OG lineup. You've got Dark Pack to get rid of it. I mean, Death Prophet's actually, it's a little annoying for Death Prophet. You can't chase and take advantage of your mm. movement speed when you're being Rod of Atos, but we'll right. see. I think more than anything, it's Puppy's tanky. He wants he wants to be able to stay alive, get off more spells where possible, and use that to his advantage. A secret are occupying the OG jungle here. Pylai Dai farming up their neutrals. Very aggressive posture from him. I mean, meanwhile, Miracle with some backup from crit is going to move out, so... Still has a ways to go before he becomes that threatening late game Slark. At this point, he, he really only tickles. But he is farming well. As for Envy, went for the early Dominator, went back into the Sanji Ashen up to 3600, so... Secret continuing to maintain their quad core status. And, I mean, hell, as yeah. we've mentioned, Pylai Dai is, is farming almost like a 4 position here, all things considered. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of Tower Gold, but even Tower Gold aside, he hasn't died all game, he's got 21 CS. Pi has played seven a assists, very strong two zero and seven. They've had fourteen kills, and as a lion, he's been in on over yeah. half of them. Very impressive. Yeah. And as mentioned, it looks like Secret are going to wait for that timing where they're going to have BKB with Aegis, just a hundred gold away now on Wii's OD, and just a small window where they'll have Aegis as well as the BKB. About two minutes now left on the Aegis, and Secret, if they want to, can go double BKB. Envy's got three point nine k gold. They're probably having a. He's probably. He may be talking with Puppy now, or kind of... And yeah, Misery's yeah. gonna have it, so it's gonna be triple BKB yep. momentarily. I think there was a bit of discussion, and he's like, I don't really wanna go BKB, like, are we... Can we actually... If, can we, if we win the game now with BKBs, fantastic. If they don't, if OG can defend the high ground, then the BKB doesn't pay off, and you'd rather have gone, like, a more late-game-oriented build. At that point, Miracle could start to get out of control, yeah. because that means OG have won a big team fight. So triple BKB suddenly comes online all at once for Secret. They've got Aegis. This is a moment in this game. This is the key timing where they're supposed to get a lane of Rax, and it comes down to OG to mount an incredible defense. Well, whenever we look at a big push about to come, buyback will be worth keeping an eye on, especially for the defending squad, and there's a triple buyback up right now for the OG squad. Yeah. None on Death Prophet, but I was just about to say, if the, the Death Prophet buyback, not saying that really matters if you're dead with Exorcism on cooldown. It's going to come down more to the... The, the Slark, and even Winter Wyvern, a pretty good hero to have buyback on. You can't Splinter Blast, one of the best defending spells they have right now. And we'll see what they can put together here as far as defending goes. OG holding back. Boots gonna just start it off right away. They saw the BKBs, they make the pounce. Envy wasn't ready for it, but he gets up the ghost. One more auto tech there. Who's desperately chasing after the Puppy. Looking to turn it. They do manage to even interrupt the Black Hole there with a the nice winner's curse, but the rest of the BKBs are coming out. Miracle trapped right now in the trees. Can he get the job done? BKB is starting to wear up, but they've killed off the IO. They've managed to grab three. OG went all in on aggression there. And I'm not sure it was quite enough. A three hero takedown. It's going to be a 4v2 power play. The Wyvern will buy back, but it's not much of a hero without his ultimate fly. Throwing up the Splinter Blast, trying to chunk down Weehaw. But remember, he still holds the Aegis. This is going to wear off fairly soon. The timing could work out poorly for him, potentially. So they force out the Wyvern buy back. All of Secret's big cooldowns expended in that one. And they don't break through the racks, so all things considered, OG, Man. a decent hold. It's a hold. And but I this think is round two coming, yeah, potentially. They, they saw like the BKBs and they're like, oh crap, how are we going to defend if they get on the high ground and just have Dro in the tower? Let's just go now. Let's jump this Dro range and try and kill her. It took a tiny bit longer than they would have liked. If they could have killed her before she got the BKB off, they wouldn't have had to chase as far. And I think the casualties would have been lower, but... Just a great initiative coming out from the OG Shock Caller there, or Moon, or whoever made the call to go in, because that's what they need to do to defend, is just catch Secret before they can BKB and respond to the Ravage there. Now, it was actually a double buyback, I also popping one, yeah. so... Uh, it was a little more expensive for, o for OG, but they, they hold the tier 3 tower. Too, so it's not, uh, it's not like it's the, the Slark who dies and buys back, Slark gets an ultimate orb, and he's the one who got the kill on the Dro range of that fight. He got a thousand gold for the kill on Envy's Dro. He suddenly already approaching his next big item. I believe he may have even got solo kill XP because he's level 16 right now. He's the highest level in this game and something that Secret have to be very wary of. Wyvern ult on cooldown for 20, no tell for 40. 
but the black hole for 70. And Ravage only a half, about a half minute off, so they are gonna make the move here on the pilot die. Aggressive jump forward from your Slark. He's suddenly in an awkward position though. Miracle gonna get down, so perfectly timed guys, but the oh. relocate out. Grit with oh. a huge save. This is gonna buy a lot of time. We have pops the BKB. He wants vengeance. He will take down Fly. And now the Thrax are exposed. Moon blinking forward. 16 seconds to go until the ultimate comes out. They've got the range X. Crit's gonna return. Crit likely die back coming here. No, he tethers out one last auto attack, finishes the job, and no tail likely to be next. They've lost the death prop, but it's before the ultimates come back on like two seconds ago. Miracle, them against the world. Ravage is coming one second. Let's it fly. Lands it away. How they're gonna be able to bring the OD down. Can they get more is the question? Puppy in danger. Miracle gonna turn this pies to drop as well. And no tails right back into it. Puppy with the TP out. No, Yule's gonna stop it. Don't take down the enigma as well. They have lost the lane of racks, but Miracle lane, okay. is getting fat. Bottom, bottom lane, lane the rat damage. amplifies, but they have not taken the melee, it's only a range. It feels like Miracle got just enough that maybe there's a chance yep. for OG. I mean, for OG, that's, that's hope. They were and very much like, yes, Secret used all their ultis on that first push and didn't actually break a lane of racks, but OG are more reliant on their ultimates. Because they're so far behind on farm, the Exorcism and the Ravage are more essential to their lineup than what the Black Hole gives to Team Secret. The Black Hole as well as the Sandy's Eclipse are like the extras for Team Secret. It's much more about just how strong they are five-man pushing in. So when there was no Ravage, no Exorcism, they can go. They can take a lane of racks, but... Oh Some man. incredible p play and just stalling, giving time for the Ravages to come back up, and Miracle suddenly is in beast mode. He is This next fast. rush is huge. Imagine Miracle with two lives right now. That oh. would be devastating. Secret relying on the... I mean, you mentioned the ultimates are a bonus, but I think they're going to become more essential if he gets that. And you've also got triple VKB. You say so. that? I d it's just hard to imagine a world where OG can get Roshan unless they win another big fight, which... They should be able to get to a position where they have Ravage again without losing a lane of Rax. All everything's pushed out for now. Uh, but they want to take a fight right now. They're not going to waste any okay. time. No tail moving in. The smoke's going to break, and they found the Enigma puppy off the bat. He's got the Crips to go, though. He's very tanky. Really okay coming through, and it's deep behind Secret Line. Black already. He lets it go, but the instant interrupt there from Fly, and they're braining down there. Oh, the Enigma. We are dropping low as well. No tail, just destroying him. Getting pummeled by Miracle on the back lines now. 28 as the chip charges. OG rampaging forward. And Misery's BKB down. He's got a TP out. Yule's up available, but he can't quite get in range. Will manage to escape. OG, all of a sudden, hitting the gas. And man, this would be the perfect time for a Roche respawn. But unfortunately, it's going to be about a minute and a half. Creeps are pushing in through the top lane. Starting to pound away at the tier fours here. The bottom lane exposed. The range racks down to 60 health bottom. But OG finding pick off after pick off. Suddenly, 2,500 more gold up on Miracle. Oh boy, we've got a ball game. It's funny because like the, the net worth graph isn't really changing all too much, but the balance is shifting. The supports of OG getting poorer and poorer. They had to buy back. They keep dying, but Miracle, his net worth just keeps going up, up, up. So it's kind of like a redistribution of wealth for it's OG. It's starting to feel like the uh, the story of OG is told by no that they have, It's the perfect yep. setup for an 8K player. You've got four feeding pubs. It's up to him against the world. Well, not the case here, but they make their move on the pilot. They're going to find maybe another pick up. TP's out. <laughs> good, good moves like, do I ravage? Do I ravage, guys? Like, I want to. Oh, that that would be a game losing <laughs> Ravage, I but think. Yeah, absolutely. Not the time or place for it, but... You could tell he was tempted. Uh, At least he didn't drop his blink. Roshan respawning very soon. Misery doing a good job of keeping tabs of the respawn with his treants there, but... It's OG who have suddenly kind of taken control of the tempo of this game. They're still dane down a full lane of racks and bottom lane exposed, so... And they are against a Prophet and a Drow, so... Secret, even if they get to a player where they can't take the fight, they can always just threaten the split push, threaten the throne. But here comes the rotation. Misery being hunted. Miracle's gonna get eyes on him. He drops the sprout. The leaps off the mark. Moon, like he forward, it's into BKB's. Puppy trying to counter initiate this one, but Moon is gonna be absolutely fine. He pops the Greaves, keeps alive for now. There's the relocate. I'll crit to save him. And a lot of BKBs got committed for this one. Round two is gonna be tricky. Do they bring back the Tidehunter? Try nice. sitting back. It looks like he wants to engage, but Pilot Eye scouts him out, picks him off, and crit will in the end be the sacrifice oh. here. So they lose both supports, but again, OG somehow keeping their cores yeah. alive and avoiding catastrophic damage. Unfortunately for them, gods, Roche is up and Secret. Looks like they're gonna grab it. They'll try to go for a, a cheeky little play there, getting a Winter's Curse on the fight. Like, the fight here is no Io's coming back and probably, like, it's a, a, he's coming back alone. OG were in a terrible spot to take that fight, but they could have tried to get, like, a five-man Winter's Curse, let the Io TP out or something, and maybe even get a kill off of it, but...
good good defensive play from Secret preventing it, and then a nice transition into Roshan, putting themselves again in that position they were in about 10 minutes ago where they need to take a lane of frags, they need to go high ground, they've got the triple BKBs, and this is really where they've got to strike and take OG down. OG have their ultimates, but what happened last time was they used the ultimate, oh, they initially smoked. defend, they're moving top, and then it's like the second push that gets them. Wow. Again, buybacks will be essential here, but for Miracle, he's not going to save for it. He's got great defensive supports, and he buys a BKB. Yeah. A lot of reasons to grab at this game. Oh, they do scout him out mid. Maybe trying to force out that relocate. Crit has it in nine seconds. Oh, Miracle will leap out. But this is that moment where a big death by OG, especially someone without buyback, could just instantly lose them the game. And even... Yeah, no tell. His buyback still on cooldown. It's going to just buy up the full soul booster. Misery applying some split push pressure. This is where not having that tier three bottom tower makes life a lot more difficult for OG. At some point, you got to imagine this Ranger X is going down 48 HP. They do have a very important ward at this stage of the game, and that bottom lane, just on the high ground, a bit outside of their base, that just allows them to spot where and when Misery is going to be split pushing in the bottom lane, so they can just divide up their heroes evenly between. Counter pushing the top lane, keeping Misery out from the bottom lane, and then defending like the three four man unit of Team Secret in the mid lane. It seems Secret are going to wait a bit longer. I'm wondering what items are coming up. The main one, probably Puppy's BKB, it looks like. He's really had trouble getting the black hole off, but when he does, it's been very quickly cancelled. There's still the Winter's Curse, but if he can just grab Fly, there's really no way to stop it at that point. And that's where someone like an OD can just blink in and go in the Winter Wipe and try and bring him For down. Force and him to commit yeah. off the bat. And this is Aegis as well as G, so it doesn't. It, there's not amazing single target first damage, there's, it, it, as well as the reliable disable to prevent the cheese coming off. Some games you see like a cheese picked up on a, a carry here, and you're like, ooh, it's, is it really going to help them keep, like, give them two lives? Because when they're getting like down to a third HP, you stun them, or you just suddenly throw out like a finger of death, and they're dead without getting to use the cheese. This game. He should be able to get up the cheese. Like, there's a really high chance this cheese is effectively giving Weeha two lives on his OD. And Weeha about to get a big item now. We'll grab a Shiva's guard. Great pick up against the Slark and his physical damage output, as well as the Death Prophet ultimate. So OG still sitting back in their base now. They do have one smoke available and one on fly, so they can make a move here out of the base, but it seems at least until the Aegis expires, they're in no hurry to do so. Fly would, I think, probably love to get a, a Blink Dagger at this point. He's about 450 gold away. And that just allows him to position a lot more efficiently in these fights. So he doesn't have to be as far forward. He can be way back in, in safety away from the OD and still get off that BKB black hole cancel with the, the Winter's Curse. At that point, it would be down to Misery on the Prophet to catch him out. Yeah. They are looking to make a move here on the mid lane. Miracle actually pouncing forward on Envy, perhaps hoping to force out a BKB. But Envy. Chunks into him, laying in with the frost arrows here. We're gonna see a rotation top from Puppy coming to shove in that lane as well. Eidolons get some in there, then back to mid. This is a secret, a full court press. Get all three lanes. Split up OG and try and create openings as well. Not just uh, is it harder for OG to defend in the mid lane as a result, but you could create an opportunity for yourself to find a pickoff somewhere with Pilai Dai on the line. If he can find like a, a blink hex finger opportunity somewhere, suddenly you've taken out one of the OG heroes, like the Winter Wyvern, who is so oh so important for the defense here. Yeah, they're keeping them busy. Moon actually having to blink into the top lane just to anchor smash out the ways. They leave Miracle Park mid. BKB yet to be activated this game. It will be the full 10 second duration, but. That's where the black hole can really shut them down. Still Secret. a lot of buybacks on this dire side now. Slow and steady siege. Continuous spam here of the Dark Pact. Oh gee, it would be an impressive hold. They're down nearly 25,000 gold, about 14,000 experience at only 34 minutes into the game. It's it's doable though. This is a but it really range. does feel. We're doable. at the point where draw ranger strats are falling. Like this is 30 minutes is normally like probably the the time where you put on draw ranger strats in the current meta game. And once you get past that point, you're gonna see a noticeable fall off. The hero doesn't scale well into the late game despite being an agi carry. And 
they're kind of known for being these more. Oh, they made a move on track. bottom. No tail getting caught out here. The frost arrow is working on him, but great defensive play by Fly, as well as crit to keep him alive. While that's happening in the mid lane, Miracle's gone and popped the BKB nice and early. Puppy still holding the black hole. Oh, Miracle, no BKB for this fight. It looks like now he tries to run away. They gap, grab him from distance. Fly, the blink over the top. They drop the hammer. Everything on the Miracle, and they will get the kill. Now a triple buyback coming up from OG. Even if they hold, this is a costly one. No tail charging into the midst of the fray. He doesn't have the Ghost Scepter ready, but the Yule Scepter is on my Miracle got to get some heavy work done in this fight. He starts to go to work. A couple of auto attacks here and there, but they're cu they're cutting the waves and just fighting it beautifully. Ravage coming through. It connects in all three. This could be enough. Maybe, just maybe. We are trapped with it. He is going to get the cheese off as you predicted. Eternal MV gutting them down for the side. Miracle did. Moon did as well. It's a triple dieback in secret. And push through and clutch game number two. All five hit the deck. No happy little trees for Moon this timer. Browns. A great job of splitting OG apart, keeping the pressure on all three lanes there at the end. And OG never really got an opportunity to use their uh, to initiate. Like you, we got this tide ravage, this death prophet X, and we talked about, but they could never engage with the ravage, followed up with the.